Uh, sorry about that. I was trying to get uh, this little thing that pops up on Go to Meeting. Sometimes if I click on the wrong thing, it tries to start that at the same time. Go to Webinar, and it was loading and it just stayed there. I couldn't get had to go into Task Manager, and it's just pain in the rear end. All right, so we have dollar fall off. Uh, it's now into it's already consumed the body of the order block. Next one will be here. I don't like this as a top or intermediate term high either. I like to see it come down here and get a response. Cable will cover that in a couple minutes. So we are back into this order block here. So we're probably going to lose it and go down into one thirty one ten or one thirty one oh five. Yeah, that's why we take partial profits, guys. Don't listen to anybody that says you gotta take full profit, full stops. It's ridiculous. All right, so I think it's safe to assume that we are done with the Canadian. I'm sorry, with the pound dollar on the heels of the numbers release at 10:30. Um, Real quick, I wanted to see, this is what I was having in mind, hopefully, um, that we would consolidate in here below this level, 13157. And if we were going to consolidate, I was waiting for it then to, on the heels of this release at 1030, perhaps getting a rundown and hitting our limit order at 13135. Um, it didn't happen, uh, but because of, we were coming into the numbers and we had already entered the 10 o'clock window, uh, New York Times profit taking uh, window for the ALGA. They'll usually uh, price in daily high or low between 10 o'clock and 11 o'clock in the morning New York time. Um, you can see the response off of that as soon as we did the tweet. I uh, told you to take some profits off. I, um, the entries were here. Let's zoom in a little bit. Okay, so here's London. We sold into a bearish order block covered right below the low right here and then we had a New York set where I outlined it during the uh, previous session prior to the one we're looking at now uh, we sold short had a little bit of a drawdown uh, not much I'm not even sure how many pips it is I'm not really concerned uh, but we took uh, first profit down here as it went below the stops noted over here over here so we took Partial profits there, half of the original position came off at that point right there. And then when price drove down and we broke below another area of liquidity, I told everyone on a tweet, if you have means to do so, take something off again. We covered here a little bit, some, uh, some more of the profit uh, would have been absorbed as well there. And then we lowered our stop down to 131.80, which priced in for this feed, uh, it gave me a 14 pip, um, and a 14 pip uh, balance that was positive. So no losses today. Um, this is the, uh, the results of taking these types of trades. Um, two entries, one in London and one in New York. In New York we managed uh, to uh, see the full um, return all the way back from the 10 o'clock window making the uh, daily low form. We expected that to occur relative to time and price. We took profits along the way making sure that even if we're wrong we're paid. We kept risk in check 
we kept uh, logical areas in mind where we would want to take profit and once that was established we were okay with leaving the remaining balance which in my case was uh, half of one standard lot and that was what you see here stopped out okay um, we took uh, one two three four five profitable exits over the heat over the course of two positions and um, it's not a lot there I mean it's not much in terms of uh, position size it's not much in terms of movement either but you can see you don't need a whole lot to do very well I mean for some of you that are watching that are young without any real professional careers this is probably what you earn in a week if not that and you probably don't even earn that much in a week so I'm not using five lots, 20 lots, and stuff like you've seen in the past on, the, you know, on Twitter uh, screen captures. I'm, I'm giving you something that's in realistic terms. It's not like a lot of, uh, you know, required money. You don't need to have a whole lot of money to do very well. And this is how you can do just one day. And then we had to work for this. Now it wasn't an easy day. So. But understanding where the liquidity is, where the most likely direction of the market is going to be relative to what the dollar index is suggesting, uh, what the other major currencies are doing, they need to be having a mirror image of or inverse uh, relationship to whatever pair we're going to be trading. If we're going to be trading the pound, dollar, we're expecting bullishness near term or firmness. In other words, it has to, it has to go sideways or up for the dollar. And then we can go short on pound dollar or another foreign currency that was uh, – Poised to move lower. Uh, we're, oh, for our focus is on cable today. We outlined the fact that we saw this move here as a Judas swing, that this would be the high of the day. It, so far, it's the high of the day unless the numbers generate a move all the way up there, which it still can do that. Um, I'm not concerned about that, but um, I think today gave us, number one, a, a really good learning experience because we were in a difficult market environment. We were waiting for numbers. The market was in consolidation across the board for the most, majority of the day, and then we had an opportunity to exercise, uh, you know, scaling out of positions, paying ourselves. You know, we have to fund the trader. You know, our trading business is a company, but the employee is you, and you're the also, you're also the employer. So the only way you're going to get paid is if you pay yourself. And you can see the the benefits of doing what I teach. It's here. That you can't argue with the numbers. You can argue with me all you want about anything else, but the bottom line is, is are you getting paid? You have to get paid doing this. If you don't, number one, you're not going to stick with it. Two, you can't survive. So uh, we looked for logical areas of profit taking. You can clearly see where the areas of institutional order flow were in effect. And while I was saying we, get, we need to take some profit here, we need to take some profit here, and then we put our stop loss and let it go. We didn't care about it. Okay, because the majority and bulk of the move has already been paid to us, and we had profits in the back of the, in the London session as well. So we we had a really good day, in my opinion. I think we had a really good day. Um, we had uh, we were blessed with a difficult uh, market environment to trade in, and I really can't ask for anything more outside of an outcome because it gave us again a really positive day. So we're doing very consistent. We're not making tons and tons of money. We're not taking tons of pips out of the marketplace. We're consistently going in, exercising the ability of being consistently profitable. Not right, not perfect, not now on the high and now on the low. We don't need all that. You just need the stuff in between those two, high and the low. Okay, and we know when they should form, and this is the, this is what you can reasonably expect. I mean, I think this is what every trader really should aspire for. This level. Not trying to get to 250 pip weekly range. That you grow into that, and we're going to teach a lot of that stuff over the next 12 months. But for now, I want to give you something that gives you realistic expectations. It doesn't inflate your expectations where you're coming in and man, I'm going to make you know, 90 pips today. No, you're coming in to trade what the market's offering you right now. Okay, and I'm using the intraday model a lot because it gives me immediate feedback and it gives you a feedback on whether or not the stuff that I'm teaching you has merit. Okay, because I could be online pretending to be something and come in here and flounder and look foolish. That's not what we're seeing here. You're seeing the things that I teach are very consistent. They deliver 
almost every single day there's an opportunity. We may, we may not take an opportunity that every single day, but we'll be able to study something. I'll give you something to, uh, to, to you know, spend your day while watching Price because you're, you're an addict like I was. I'm telling you, I know you. <laughs> okay, you want to continuously look at price charts. By having a context and knowing what to look for, it makes your study fruitful instead of just wondering and worrying about what you missed. This way, you're actually engaging the marketplace and you're in, in your learning. Okay, so that's, I think that's about it. I mean, I'm, I'm going to use this as the, uh, the daily recap. Um, I'm not asking for any questions, but uh, I just want to get some feedback uh, in regards to what I'm supplying so far. Okay, and I don't, I'm only going to be here for two, three more minutes, and we're going to close it. But I want to ask, while I have your attention, um, there's a lot of things that said about our community, more specifically about me. And while I do a lot of things online to play and entertain myself, um, in this realm, I'm trying to be focused and as professional as I possibly can. It doesn't mean I'm not going to rib you guys once in a while and, you know, and, <laughs> and joke with you, but I'm trying to be very mindful that you are paying me for an exchange of service. So my question to you is, are we in agreement that what I'm sharing is what you were expecting at minimum? Okay. For the ones that are concerned about the intraday day trading, that they can't do that, okay, I'm asking you to trust me, okay? I'm doing this entire month to prove to you that you're learning concepts that work. They work. They absolutely work. But I don't want you feeling like because I'm teaching in the intraday capacity, that that's all this is ever going to be, and there's nothing else to do this. So therefore, if you can't be a day trader, this is probably not the best thing for you, and you need to move on and go someplace else or not be a part of the mentorship. All those things that you want to do, I have to get to a general foundation of what we look for because everything that's being seen on an intraday chart is going to be seen on a daily chart, a weekly chart, a four-hour chart. So I know what you want to do as a student, and I know what you want to do as a human being. You are in a hurry to get to your understanding of how to do this. And you're thinking, if I can learn it faster than 12 months, then great. I don't have to speak. I don't have to be here for 12 months. I don't have to spend the money. I could tell you right now, I'm going to turn this into a 36 month course, okay? And I'm not, but I'm just telling you, I think it's reasonable for you to be submitting yourself to 12 months. And it has nothing to do with the amounts of money that I'll collect. It has nothing to do with anything. If anything, if I was trying to get money, I would say, hey, pay for it all right now, and it's only going to be 90 days, and I ain't going to have the time commitment to it. I'm telling you in realistic terms, for you to learn what I know you want to learn and what you should need to learn, it's going to take you some time. And I have to get everybody at least as close as I possibly can in the, in the beginning three months, okay, up to the closest level of understanding as I possibly can. If you feel like there's redundancy, the daily involvement like this does away with that sense of redundancy, okay, because you're actually seeing it used. It's one thing to see the tutorials and read and watch a video and see me demonstrate it after the fact and me telling you I did this and I did that and I did this over here, and it looks like hindsight and you really don't know if it really was taken if the trade really wasn't there, you're seeing it on a daily basis that these tools will give you the perspective that you want to have as a trader. We're not guessing. We're not knowing with absolutions either, but we know where the probabilities lie, where the market will most likely go to. If you get comfortable living in that gray area, it's not you are going to be right 100% of the time. You're never hearing me say, watch and see. It's going to do this. Okay, I'm telling you what I anticipate to see, 
And since we started the last week of August, before the actual mentor sh uh, mentorship started, uh, every single day there's something transpiring in the charts that we've outlined. Okay, and my hopeful, uh, my hope for all this is, thus far for September, I have been diligently trying to communicate to the ones that are still in the fence about whether this is real, whether this is something they can do, and is it something that people can really consistently call. That's my goal for September because if we can all eliminate all the stuff that I've done over the years to play with trolls online, um, that's what I wanted to communicate for the first month. I'm showing you what the market's doing. I'm not telling you what to do with your money. I'm never going to do that in the entire 12 months. But look at what's been shown to you. Just look at that. That's all I'm asking is, is look at that and you tell me if this if it stayed just like this, which it's not going to, but if it just stayed like this for 12 months while you were learning tutorials two times a week, I can't imagine why anybody would be upset about that. I just personally, I can't see it. But I know some of you come from different cultures. You have a higher expectation in certain things. I just want to know, am I, am I meeting a minimum threshold of your expectations thus far? Because I know where my content is going to take us. Or I'm, I'm not lacking in, in any area in terms of what you expected. Okay. I, I appreciate that because I'm not taking I'm not taking the fact that you're giving me money lightly. Okay. I, I want you to number one, when this when this mentorship ends, I don't want you to having any regrets about what the amount of time you spent, whatever money you spent. I want you to feel like you had an absolute value and that you came away with an empowerment that I I know you were gonna go if you if you put the time in, you're going to walk away better. I know you are. And I'm hoping that you see the fruits of it every single day we get together. We have an understanding of what should take place, why it should take place, and admittedly, I'm learning how to do this in a commentary capacity because I haven't done it before. So those that are not in the live sessions, I need to be prompted by the ones that are in the live session um, to send out charts because the folks that are at jobs, and I'm, I'm, believe me, I, I read your emails and I read your, your, your tweets to me in private. I need to remind myself of doing that, okay? And I know it will help you because you're at your desk job or you're whatever you're doing. And if you get a chart and you see what I'm talking about live, then you'll obviously know where we're at in the live session in terms of what we're expecting for the marketplace. So I apologize for not having done it as expediently or as consistently as I should be doing it, but I get tied up in explaining the things live, and admittedly, I forget those individuals that are not in here may not be aware of what we're talking about. So my request is the folks that are in the live sessions, if you would please help me, remind me that when we're talking about a specific idea where the market's at, remind me if you don't mind, please, to, to send a chart via Twitter because that will help me do that. Because I want everyone to feel like they're number one being considered, and I'm not only just focusing on the ones that have the ability to sit in here live. I want to be able to service everyone's expectations as best as I possibly can. And I might not be able to do that for some, and I appreciate you know your opportunity and, and, and allowing me to try, but I may not be able to deliver what you what you want. And I'm okay with if you come to the conclusion this isn't for you. I'm not going to talk you out of it. I'm not going to try to. I, I would like to know why you didn't want to stay, um, but it, you don't have to give me that. But if you ask, you know, to, to cancel the subscription, obviously you won't get billed for the next month. But the, uh, I, I, my intent is for you to be a part of it and learn. Uh, what are the red dots? What are the red dotted lines? Oh, that's what I was getting ready. Um, Take, I was actually going to take those off. The dotted lines are from – this is the entry. Excuse me. <clears throat> Let me get this out of the way a little bit. This little arrow here is where in the London session I went short at the bottom of a bearish order block, and the dotted line connects where the exit is down here. Okay, so that's the close of the trade. And then in New York, I went short here. 
with two lots and the first exit with profit I took one lot off there so it's connecting where I got in at and where I got out at and then the second exit from this same entry I took a half of a standard lot off down here and then I left the uh, remaining portion to get stopped out at plus 14 pips so it just gives you a reference point where you were at in and where you're getting out at That's exactly what you're going to get, Andreas. You're, in 12 months, you're going to know how I think about things, the procedures I go through that are routine in my mind. And eventually, once you understand those routines, you'll know what I'd be saying if I was sitting next to you or on a live session. You'll, you'll think the same things I'm thinking because they're very generic principles. Um, Canadian dollar. Um, So far, we've repelled off that bullish order block. They may come back up here and clear these highs out and maybe stretch its legs a little bit more for the upside. It depends on what the dollar's doing. Let me take a look at that. Yeah, it's come off the bullish order block here, which is what we're expecting to see a little bit of a movement off of that. I'd like to see this thing turn into a wick and then run up to the level we were looking for, 95, 95 to 96, big figure. That'd be cool. But if it doesn't, I'm content with what was delivered today in the British pound. Um, I don't predict what we're going to do tomorrow until I get a feel for midnight in New York. That's that's when I have a, an opinion about tomorrow. I can have all kinds of expectations, but I don't really develop an opinion or a bias until around midnight in New York. After that's after that price is priced in, and I see what Asia has done and and uh, what we did relative to the previous New York and London session, then I can adopt. And you'll learn all these things. But and I know you're trying to. I know and I appreciate your enthusiasm, and I love it because I get to relive all this stuff for you. But I don't want you feeling like you got to know what's going to happen right now for tomorrow, because I don't. I don't know that. You're never going to know that. We develop those biases around midnight every night going into the Frankfurt and uh, European session. <laughs> you gotta put it on vibrate. All right, so can I show the fib setup again? Perhaps take a screenshot. Okay, um, I'll do that, and then I'm gonna close it, guys, because I really I'm exhausted, and I have people that have sent me emails I gotta get back to, and I gotta update my list of questions I gotta respond to for this week's weekly recap video. There's a lot of questions that came on the forum. And a lot of questions in the logs, individual presentations that I have to get to. So uh, let me do the, the FIB thing real quick. All right. If you have your FIB and you draw it from a low up to a high, this low up to this high, let me get these other lines out of here. For those of you who've been around for a while, you don't need to hang around for this. All I'm doing is giving the FID levels. The uh, I can see the questions, but I may not have seen your questions as you sent them. There is no website staff outside of me. I'm a one I'm a one man army. So all the questions that come in email come to me, and I have a cousin that helps. Uh, filter some of the questions that are related to analysis. If it's trade ideas or confirmations, I don't even see them, but she sends me all the other ones that are questions about uh, the service or, or that. <clears throat> None of your billing information is exposed, so if you're ever thinking that, I don't have any access to that. The only thing I ever see is email addresses. All right, so... I'm not going to answer that, John. You'll have to wait around and figure that one out. <laughs> All right. So you want to click on Fibonacci, properties, 
Um, and the way I did that is once you put the fib on, okay, you highlight it, okay, and wherever it, you can get the center dot or one of the dots here on the upper or lower level, and you're going to right click on your mouse and you're going to click on Fibo properties. And I'm going to just scroll through, and all you do is just tap in the area and you type in the settings you see that I have online, okay? It's just simply just duplicating what you see online. So the first one is the zero level. Then it's 0.5, and then you type in equilibrium. Make sure you spell it right or Peter will let you know. <laughs> and then you have the 62% level. Then you have the 100 level. Then the 127 extension. Yeah, the, the box doesn't expand, Tina. I'm sorry. I was I was actually trying to do it once before, trying to teach it to someone else, but it doesn't. This is all you get. And it's an NT4 limitation, not me. Uh, and then you got 1.62. You have the advanced version. I don't have that one. <laughs> and that's, you write in there, profit objective 2. And I'll teach you all that stuff, when to use, when to look for certain ones. And believe me, you will have a ton of information coming at you, but I can't do everything in one setting. And then you have the, the level 2, which is a 200% uh, uh, extension. You write that as swing projection objective. It's a, basically a measured move, in other words, what that is. And then you have 0 0.705, which is the optimal trade entry sweet spot. Then you have 0.79, which is the 79 cent trade zone level, which is the last threshold of optimal trade entry. Okay, and then you just click OK, and then your chart will look like this. And then you'll learn all the secrets of using the Fibonacci for profit taking. That's really all I use Fibonacci for. Um, I, initially, I used Fibonacci for entries and all that stuff. You don't ever see a Fibonacci on my chart, ever. You know, when we talk about entries and stuff, it's, it's not there. It's not there. But I do believe that Fibonacci helps with my determination of exits. And that's the part of my trading I'm still refining uh, because I just don't have satisfaction in that. I, I want to be able to refine it better. So that's it, Munchkins. I'm going to leave you here with uh, that. I hope you had a very pleasant afternoon and day with me. Um, if you learned something, obviously let me know on Twitter. I greatly appreciate the feedback. And if you didn't, stick around. You'll learn some more. We have a lot of stuff to cover between now and 50 weeks from now. You know, we have 50 weeks left. Okay, there's so much content that's coming. You got two more teachings this weekend. Uh, you got two more teachings next weekend as well. And uh, next week, uh, uh, you also uh, next Friday you'll have the uh, the resource I promised that will be given every single month. So. Uh, yeah, that's about it. I need to get something to eat. <laughs> I'm starving and I need a nap. So I will catch you guys on probably tomorrow, which is which is my tonight. Um, tonight around uh, 1 o'clock in the morning, I'll send you a tweet. Uh, I probably won't be doing anything in London tomorrow simply because I, I want to try to get some rest and get caught up because I've been burning it on both ends. And But we'll be able to be live tomorrow in the New York session, so I think that's fair. Um, that's it. Anything happens uh, in between now and then, and I'm awake, I will send you via Twitter. And again, I greatly appreciate your uh, your trust in me, and I'm loving the fact that I'm able to share this with you guys. So take it easy. I will catch you on the flip side.